Hello, Augies Worldwide. I'm Dave Kassler, amateur radio call sign KE0OG, here with another episode of Ask Dave. Today we're going to take a look at an interesting tip uh, put to us by um, KC5ULU. Uh, his uh, last name is uh, uh, De Bohannon. And he has an, an interesting email about his antennas and so on. Something that he has discovered worked fairly well for him as a substitute for a ferrite choke. Before we jump into really exploring this very interesting idea uh, that we have here, I'd like to pay uh, special thanks to Ronald Hayes Jr., who is one of my newest patrons on Patreon. You too can become a patron of this channel by going to patreon.com slash ke0og and picking a way that works for you. Now, remember, the, the function here is balanced, balanced to unbalanced. And in this case, we want to feed a balanced antenna with an unbalanced line. Coaxial line is unbalanced because the outside is held at ground potential and the inside is where all the work is done, okay? If you feed a balanced antenna with an unbalanced line, you can get a reflection from the antenna that wants to go down the outside of the coax. Let me demonstrate here how this works. Let's suppose you have a dipole and you feed this with coax, which has a center conductor here and then the shield goes to here. Okay, and this goes down like this to the shack. You have, if you look at a large view of it, the center conductor, the inner conductor, which is all braid, okay, and then there's a plastic sheath here. And this braid, <coughs> still braided, goes down the outside. And this acts as though it's a three-conductor cable. This inside right here is supposed to be at ground potential, okay? This inner side here carries the um, current for the antenna, and it's a 50 ohm device. That means the ratio of the voltage to the current is 50. Now, what can happen here is since this is a balanced device, this voltage and this voltage want to be the same except opposite each other. <clears throat> so one's negative, one's positive. And when you do that, you get a little reflection and it comes down the outside of the coax here. Now this is one of the oddities about RF. Okay, RF in a cable it behaves very differently from RF in a circuit. In this case, all of the energy of the coax, assuming it's good coax, um, will be contained inside the coaxial cable. Now what runs down here on the outside of the cable, remember in coax, there are in RF, the RF tends to run on the skin of a conductor runs down here and you get a reflection. This gives you a bad SWR, but the more important thing is that it can give you RFI, or radio frequency interference in the jack. Some of the ways that you can tell you get RFI is if when you press transmit and talk, you get odd behaviors out of the radio, um, or if you're doing code, you get uh, unsent uh, dits, it starts to misbehave and so on. That's a good way of recognizing RFI. So the question is, how do we keep this voltage from flowing down the outside? And the answer is to put something around it that will cause this voltage to see a high impedance, okay? And the way you can do that is to put like a ferrite bead 
around the uh, around the cable you can put multiple of these around the cable if you want okay and this will cause this voltage to see a high impedance and therefore the current will not propagate on the outside and so this has the function of converting unbalanced to balanced by means of those chokes there's no voltage ratio or impedance ratio or I guess you would say it's one-to-one -one. but it's a commonly used method now what we have here is he is telling me a little bit about his antennas. Uh, these are horizontal antennas that are designed to be in a triangular design so that they um, can transmit unidirectionally. Notice that they're horizontally polarized. So he's doing what's called weak signal work. Now, this is a little hard to see, but if you look right there, you see that the coax isn't black. It's sort of gray. And let me show you why. And this is shown in his last photograph right here. In this last photograph, what he has done is stripped about a foot of uh, RG8X, <clears throat> and he's taken just the shield. And he's pulled the inner part out of it, so just the shield. And if you push the shield this way, it'll tend to expand. So he's put that over the cable right there. So that cable right there comes in over here. And he puts it along here. Okay. And this creates a capacitance with the shield fairly large capacitance with the shield that tends to short short circuit the uh, the current okay because this thing is ground on the outside and so as it gets in here what you've got is a capacitance to ground okay and that will also act as though it were a whole bunch of ferrite beads. I'm not going to say that it will work extremely well, but it has, considering this is a foot long, and from his experience as he describes it here, it works really well. <clears throat> now notice it's going to be really hard to put over that cable because even expanded out, it's not that big but it will go over the outside of an RG8X or something like that, okay? So before you put the cable end on, you slip this on like that, and it should work pretty well. I'd like to hear from you. Let's see. Let's do this. Now, the thing uh, I'm interested in is I'd like to get feedback from you about uh, uh, Mr. D. Uh, Bohanan uh, and his... Uh, his little idea of using a simple amount of um, coax braid here to act as something to stop the common mode from going on down the line. And if you have some experience with that and would like to share that, I'd like to hear it. Send it to uh, askdave, all one word, at arrl dot org, O-R-G. Okay? So, there you have it. If you've gotten this far in the video, I think you probably like these videos, and if you would like to help support this station financially, please do so. You can go to decastlercom support and look for a way that works for you. And until we next meet, 73.